Everything you've ever been told about gar fishing has been a lie. Okay, so I'm gonna go right about here. It's perfect. Probably add about 20 seconds, 25, maybe 30 seconds. I get this rod good and I'm going for it. Yep. I'm hooked up. All right guys, you saw it. Less than 30 seconds of running, a set, and I got her. I'm gonna back off a little bit. That way she don't spit it like last time. Come on baby, stay pinned. Ooh. Ooh. I'm feeling that. I think there's some trees right around here. I'm a little scared. You gotta come up. <laughs> Howdy folks, Henry Martin here, catching dinosaurs. I've spent the last 10 years catching alligator gar in Texas. For five years, I listened to the guides that had been doing it for 30 years. They basically told everybody, use a four-aught treble hook, let them eat for 20 minutes, gut hook them, cut the leader, and keep going. And obviously that's not the most conservation friendly method to catch these fish. So for five years, I've used only this hook. This is a one-aught Gamagatsu live bait hook. So the first lie is you do not need treble hooks or giant shark hooks to catch these fish. Everything on my social medias for five years has been on this tiny little hook. Going to the next lie, basically the guides have told people you have to wait 20 minutes for a guard to swallow the bait so you can actually hook them and that's a complete and utter lie when you watch these fish feed in an aquarium setting most of the times they've swallowed the bait in five seconds flat when you give an alligator gar a smaller bait that hasn't been frozen something they really want to eat about this size when they come along especially on a leader like this that's not wire this hook will be inside their mouth and the bait inside their mouth I fished this entire year setting within 30 seconds of gar taking the bait and we've done absolutely just fine. Caught big fish every single trip and done just as well as we've done before. So today I'm out here to prove that you don't have to wait 20 minutes to let them eat. And I'm also out here to prove you don't need a giant treble hook to catch alligator gar. I'm gonna give you all the 60 second rundown on the gear I'm using. I've got a pin slammer 10,500 of 150 pound braid on it. This is a Vexan inshore extra extra heavy eight foot six braided for 120 pound braid. My hook right here, Gamakatsu live bait one aught J hook. My leader is 550 pound braid. Here's our friend, the common carp. He's gonna be our bait today. He's not a native species, but alligator gar actually have a really good taste for him. I'm gonna be cutting a section about like right here to right there and then about right there. And I just want about fist sized chunks or a little bit smaller ones that's really easy for a big guard to just mouth completely when they pick it up. So I'm rigged up. You see my little hook right there, right on top. You don't need a huge gap. Well, that's the end of the boring part of the video. Let's go out there and throw out some baits. I come over here to the uh, calmer bank, tie off somewhere over here and cast a little guard right there. Cast right here into this calm water. All right, I'm tied off. I've already seen several fish over six foot. Let's get some baits out. Okay, so I'm gonna go right about here. It's perfect. I work things before we get further into this. I am going to show every hook set I do today. So if we have a terrible hookup ratio, I'm gonna show that. Gosh, there's some big guard here. I'm gonna check my drags real quick and make sure they're really heavy so I can get a good hook set, hook set to get through their arboured bow. Last thing I wanted to mention, um, I have some people that kind of ask me, you know, I've been out there for eight hours and then an eight footer bites. Am I really gonna set in the first 15 seconds? And my opinion is I wouldn't worry about it that much. A lot of times when you do miss them, they just think the bait was alive still and they'll turn right around in the next five or 10 minutes can pick it up again. So wouldn't worry about it. You're gonna catch the fish you're supposed to catch. The river's gonna bring you what it's supposed to bring you and uh, just enjoy yourselves out there, you know? I will say too, there is absolutely no better feeling than getting a run, waiting 20 seconds, setting hard, fighting that fish hard, 
bringing her in, seeing the hook in the mouth, unhooking her, getting her tagged, and sending her on the way. Best feeling ever. One last thing to mention, I'm not gonna set at any specific amount of time. It's gonna be about 20 or 30 seconds, but it's really the time it's gonna take me to get untied from where I'm at and get my other rod in. So it should be about 30 seconds. It's about as long as I'm gonna let them run with it. And hopefully we uh, mouth hook them and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Checking my drag here. I want it really tight. That should be good there. Turn on the camera. You can see we're running. Our float is just moving off right where it was. Just got the camera on. We're gonna reel this one in. Get it out of the way. This seems like a pretty good run too. So we're probably at about 10 seconds of running now. Let me get this one stowed. Ooh, nice fish. We're gonna get the rope off and get myself over there. All right, we're probably at about 20 seconds, 25, maybe 30 seconds. Let me get this rod good and I'm going for it. I'm hooked up. I'm gonna back off. Yeah. Oh, dang it. That was the fish we were after. You can see my hook held up and just a tiny little bit of damage to the leader. I'll just cut that and redo it. We uh, came really close. That had to be at least six foot fish. So let's go ahead and put them on back out. I got the adrenaline going. That was a big fish. Hook came out, probably should have lowered my drag a little bit. I wasn't really sure how big that fish was, but we got purchase. Only we'll let it run for 30 seconds. Gonna get a new bait on, put it on back out couple things to learn from this first the hook is fine no damage done um, I should have lowered my drag it would have helped it not pop out second you can see this is where the gar was actually biting on it so this hook literally just pinned her in her armored mouth it didn't stick but that's fine we're just gonna go ahead and put them on back out I don't really think that fish cared that much she might even come back and eat again but you can see that bait was small and she was able to grab the hook the bait all the way up to here in the first 30 seconds. Some thoughts while I'm getting my baits back out. I could sit here and I could be all upset. I could let that eat me up. Oh no, seven foot gar, I lost it. That's the worst thing ever. Let it ruin the rest of my day. I'm not gonna do that though. I've done this enough to realize the river's gonna give me exactly what it's gonna give me and I'm gonna be exactly in the right spot when I'm supposed to be there. And for whatever reason, that fish and I weren't supposed to meet. So I'm gonna throw them back out and I'm gonna meet another fish or maybe we were supposed to meet and maybe that fish will come back. But I'm not gonna let it ruin my day. I'm gonna go ahead and put the baits on back out. I've had some people that have tried my method and they lose a fish or two and they just take it so personally and they're just like, catching dinosaurs, you have failed me for the last time. I will find your family. And guys, it's not that big of a deal. You're out here to enjoy yourself, to catch some big fish, to enjoy it with your family, your friends. And you know, just relax, try to enjoy your lives. Oh, oh, there's a, there's the float just went under. <clears throat> All right, I'm clearing my rod. I'm gonna stow this one, get us untied. We're probably at about five seconds right now. All right, I think I did that in under 20 seconds probably. I'm gonna check my drag, pretty tight. Y'all ready? Come on, baby, I believe. Uh, 
that's a strong fish i think all right guys you saw it less than 30 seconds of running a set and i got her i'm gonna back off a little bit that way she don't spit it like last time i'm on baby stay pinned Ooh. Ooh. i'm feeling that I think there's some trees right around here. I'm a little scared. You gotta come up. <laughs> oh, oh, no, she just... <sighs> There's my bait, guys. You can see she didn't even mar up the leader at all. I just literally had her pinned right there in the mouth. That was a big fish. She's over easy, like 130, 140 pounds. That one hurt a little bit, but you know, just like I said before, the river's going to give you exactly what it's supposed to give you when you're supposed to get it. So for whatever reason, that's what was supposed to happen. Let's go get them on back. Yeah, right, guys, Gar are at two. I'm at zero. I know y'all are already down there in the comment section. Your method sucks, blah, 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 whatever. But you know, at the end of the day, I could sleep at night and neither one of those fish were harmed at all. They were literally pinned in an armored mouth. Spat the hook. It's fine. There's a ton of them out here. Just going to keep on trying, you know? Oh, we're running right here, guys. Go ahead and clear this one. Get ourselves untied. I might stand for this hook set. Let's see if it stops being all windy. I'm having a hard time getting a good enough hook set sitting down, so... All right, she's had it for like about 30 seconds or so. I'm gonna check my drag. Lots of drag. Make sure I'm good and stable in here. Come on, baby, stay pinned. Well, I've hooked three up. Set three times. Ooh, she's strong. I've set three times and hooked three. Still on, still on. Nice. Woo! That's a six foot fish. She's a good fish. I'm gonna try to keep her not jumping. Jumping's not good. Okay, keep the drag loose too. That's gonna keep that hook pinned. Let her run with the drag instead of just head shaking straight against what I'm doing. Uh, a little under six foot. Nice fish though. Wow, guys. Look at that. She only had it 30 seconds and she you can't even see the hook. It's down. I try to tell you guys, they eat, they swallow pretty much immediately. The whole thing where they have to eat for 20 minutes, it's a total lie. She gonna jump? Maybe. There, there's the jump. Took me right back where I hooked her from. Let's see if she pulled me over here. I can land her real quick. That's a wall. That's a wall, girl.
Hi guys, um, looks like we got our first fish of the day. We missed two. We had them hooked up for about 30 seconds, lost them. This one stayed pinned. And now I just need to get to a bank to where we can go ahead and land her and tag her and take some measurements and that sort of thing. Nope, 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 don't do it. Just wait, just wait. We're gonna tag this girl. If I had to guess, she's a hair under six foot. Not by much, but she is. We'll go ahead and get a good measurement on her just to make sure. Yeah, so she's at 5'8". It's a good fish. All right, guys, I hope that explains my position on the matter i set kind of like i was flathead fishing i let each fish run for 20 or 30 seconds kind of cleared my gear and um then i went, went ahead and set on them and every single fish that i set on i had three this is like I've, this is my first hour of being here too i had three fish and i hooked up all of them the first two were bigger than this one this one we landed i got the hook out it's sitting right there back on the bank and um yeah i really just wanted to show y'all that there are people out there that are spreading information that's not necessarily real alligator guard don't take 30 minutes to get a bait in a place where they can be hooked they very clearly do it in the first 20 or 30 seconds so basically everything that's ever been told about alligator guard fishing is actually wrong and people that have been fishing for these fish aren't actually as good at catching them as they think they are um I think my final thoughts are there's people in the fishing community, especially the alligator gar fishing community that have been considered experts and experts have their work cross-examined by peer review. Experts also pass on the information that they have so that future generations don't lose that information. That experts don't do the exact same thing for 30 or 40 years. They try new things, they're never satisfied, they're always tweaking things, new hooks, changing different stuff. I think my final thoughts are, be careful for fake experts out there. That goes even for me, you know, take what I say with a grain of salt. If it resonates, take it. If it doesn't, then, you know, let it go. But um, keep an eye out for people that claim to know a lot about a subject, but don't actually try to advance what they're doing in any way. So thank you, big girl. Thank you for getting a tag in and letting us catch you. Love you. See you later.